not easy, but when I was first asked to do this talk by Sabrina, I asked her, what do you think people want to hear from me about? And when I saw the theme of the day and when I heard her response and she said, people really want to hear about your recipe for success. Well, the theme of today is showing up. And the reality is, is I could not be me and I would not be me if it weren't for all the people that have shown up for me. I broke up my talk into three areas, who I was, who I am, and what I will do, my promise to myself and my promise to others. So here it goes. I was married at 17 years old, had my son at 18, and I was divorced by the time I was 20. I remember my son and I living in a tiny little apartment. I had a fashion retail job. I was in school. It was a chaotic time. My ex-husband and I shared a social network. And I don't know if it was because he was a little older, if it was because he was a man, I'm not sure, but all of our friends sided with him, and maybe because they thought he'd be more successful and was the better bet. But I had one friend that stayed by my side. And one night, she had said, hey, I think we need to get you out of your environment and get you out of, the, out of, your, out of your apartment. And she said, let's go to my mother's house for dinner. And I went. And it was one of the best decisions I had ever made. From the moment I walked into her house, I felt a connection to her mother. And then I realized she too was a single mother. We shared a similar circumstance. But this woman, you know, 20 years older, 25 years older, that it helped me envision the woman I could be. She was successful. She owned her own home. She owned her own business. And she was raising her daughter with so much integrity and love. I needed to see that. It was like wind beneath my wings to see this woman so accomplished. She showed up for me, an 18-year-old single mother. But she didn't realize it. She showed up for me just by being herself, being who she is, because she showed up for herself. I was not born in this country. I'm an immigrant. I was five years old when my parents moved here from the, U well, at the time it was the Soviet Union, and it's the Ukraine now. They left everything behind with $100 in their pocket. Can you imagine that, leaving everything? They had to learn a new language. They had to learn a new culture. I remember Halloween coming up, and my parents were like, what is this? You know, people, you know, begging for candy. What's that? You can't celebrate Halloween. Um, but they did that. They did that because they wanted a better life for their family. They wanted a better life for their two daughters. My parents showed up for my sister and I. I was very fortunate to experience generosity at a young age. I remember when we moved to Canada, I was, as I said, I was five years old, and I'm not even sure where we were staying at the time, but strangers came to our home, and it was the United Jewish Appeal, which is a Jewish organization, um, charitable organization. They came with food, they came with clothes, they sat there with my parents telling them where their kids would go to school. They became our extended family. They became our friends. I learned generosity at such a young age because of the UJA. The UJA showed up for strangers, but they showed up. I was very shy growing up. Still am, that's why this isn't easy. But I had a grade four teacher, Miss Piper. She helped me feel like it was okay to be shy. She helped me feel that I didn't have to be like everyone else. She gave me permission to actually celebrate my quiet. And it, made, it somehow gave me the confidence to start to become me. What I didn't realize at the time is Miss Piper was struggling with cancer. 
Miss Piper couldn't show up for herself, but Miss Piper showed up for a little girl that didn't know how to show up for herself. What I learned a couple of years later was Miss Piper died. She lost her battle with cancer. But her legacy for me continues to live on. So, fast forward 20, 25 years, and here I am. I am 47 years old. My son recently graduated from law school and is thriving. I guess I showed up for him, that 18-year-old girl. I am an entrepreneur who employs dozens of people with offices in Toronto and New York, running probably one of the top PR firms in our country. And remember that fashion retail job I was telling you about when I was 18? Well, fast forward 25 years later, they became my client. <laughs> so they showed up for me then. I showed up for them now. I am philanthropic. I helped start an organization called Artists for Peace and Justice. We've raised over $30 million. We built the very first free high school in Port-au-Prince in Haiti, because there isn't any, any education beyond junior high school, um, private education. And we just celebrated our third graduating class. It's because of organizations like the United Jewish Appeal that would, I was able to witness the importance of generosity, the importance of giving back to strangers. It is our privilege, our honor, to give back to those that need us the most. We need to remember that and never forget that. I am still shy. <laughs> most people wouldn't know that. But Miss Piper gave me permission to not let that debilitate me. So being shy, what it's called now, really, is, and I'm an introvert. <laughs> but I live the life of an extrovert. She gave me permission to be anything I wanted to be and not let that debilitate me. And that was so important. The difference between an introvert and an extrovert is last night I needed to stay home and I needed to re-energize for something like this. And I'll need to hibernate for two days after this. <laughs> Whereas an extrovert will thrive on this energy and this will energize them. And that's the only difference. It doesn't have to stop you from being you or being the person you're meant to become. I became me because of Miss Piper, because of my parents, because of the United Jewish Appeal, because of my girlfriend's mom showing up. They showed up for me. And my son, who physically showed up for me when I was 18 years old, and it was because of him that I think I became the person that I am. He became my compass to making good decisions. And I am forever grateful. Remember my girlfriend's mom, and I had said that she showed up for me and didn't even realize it? I want you all to really think about that. This is our opportunity to show up for ourselves. We have an opportunity to be the best versions of ourselves, so why wouldn't we want to be that? Because we can lead by example. She showed up for me because she showed up for herself. Self-care is not selfish. So, I love this quote. It only takes one person and one act of kindness to inspire others and to create change. Show up for those around you and show up for yourself. I think this really encompasses my talk. So this is the promise I make to myself and the promise I make to all of you. I will show up for young people that might not have the tools to show up for themselves. I will not judge them. I will not prejudge them. I will only try and help them envision the amazing people that they can become. 
I will continue to support organizations, whether it's local charities or charities like Artists for Peace and Justice that are in Haiti. I'll never forget visiting my school and a little boy in, my in one of the classrooms had said to me, are you going to forget about us? And the backstory there is Haiti, most people 10 years ago when we started the organization couldn't actually show anybody where Haiti was on the map. It was like a forgotten country. Well, then six months later, the earthquake hit and everybody knew where Haiti was. And then six months later, everyone was gone again. So it was forgotten again and the country's still in shambles. So when this little boy looked at me and said, will you forget about us? I looked back and said, how could I possibly ever forget? My earliest memories are of people doing good, strangers giving back. Not only will I never forget, but I will always show up for those that need my support the most. I will always be grateful. You would think that having a child at such a young age was terrifying. It was terrifying. <laughs> but writing something I was grateful for every single day somehow helped me work through the fear. It helped me, it helped me think of him first. It helped me try to create a better life for both of us that we could both be proud of. I encourage you all to write in a journal and just say one thing daily that you're grateful for because we're lucky. When you go to places like Haiti and when you see how people live and they're happy and they're grateful, we should be grateful. So what does all of this actually mean? What does showing up actually mean? Well, it's being kind to a stranger it's being kind to yourself. It's actually looking up from your cell phone and looking up and looking around you and just being present. I think we're losing that and I think it's important to be present. I'll give you an example. The other, okay, Uber. How many of you take Uber? Lots of hands, okay. How many of you are on your phones when your Uber driver is talking to you and telling you a story? Yeah. So recently, I was picked up by an Uber driver, and she was a woman, and she started telling me how she had to flee India with her two daughters in tow. She told me that her husband was abusive, and her parents sided with her husband because they were very traditional, and they felt it was abuse that she needed to take. She did not want her daughters to see that. She did not want to raise them like that. So she came to Canada with her two daughters and she was saying how grateful she is to be able to drive this Uber truck and provide for her family. I looked at her through the mirror and I said, wow, I'm so proud of you. That would take so much courage. Tears are welling down her face as I looked at her. And she said, I'm, no one has ever told me they're proud of me. Thank you. So <laughs> that, I think, is showing up. I will leave you with a final thought. And it's simple. One of the things I absolutely love is at the end of my SpinCo class, the instructor always says, the instructor always says at the end of the class, cheers your neighbor with your water bottle. I look forward to that because cheersing your neighbor through your sweat and them smiling back at you, I feel like they're showing up for me and I'm showing up for them. And it's that simple. So after I'm done this talk, who will you show up for? How will you show up for the person sitting next to you? How will you show up for your Uber driver, your colleague at work, a family member, or even a stranger? 
How will you show up? We are all here today for a reason, and I thank you all for showing up.